grand jury documents from the Jeffrey Epstein case have finally been released. After almost 20 years, these documents are somehow even more disgusting than anybody could have predicted. Uh, you know, when this, when this story first started surfacing, I think you might have been the first to be talking about it on a regular basis. I mean, when I look back, you, you were at the edge of this story. Uh, it was a friend of mine, actually, that initiated some of these first cases. You picked up on the story, and you reported on some of the first things that ever happened on Epstein. Even back, how long have we been in this, this together? 20 years? Yeah, 20, 20 years. years. Even back when you were talking about this, you were saying, what the hell? Why, why is this man not being seriously prosecuted? Pick it up from there. Yeah, and, uh, obviously when Epstein was first arrested and all this happened in 2006, he was given his uh, prison sentence 13 months. You can leave six days a week. Just basically come back here to sleep. Keep doing what you're doing. And the whole thing stunk from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. But we never got our hands, because we weren't allowed to, on any of these documents. Right. Well, last week these grand jury documents came out. And when you look at these grand jury argument or, or, or statements, the things these individual people said to the victims, suddenly it becomes clear like, okay, that's why he didn't get punished because this grand jury looks like it was people that were selected by Epstein himself. Mm -hmm. They were so horrible. And the prosecutors were horrible to and, the victims. And you, to your credit, <clears throat> I remember we're saying, why won't they release these documents? Time and time, that's what you sell in the show. Why won't they release these documents? All of a sudden, DeSantis, of all people, comes along. Yeah. And he says, yes, you will re re release these documents because any grand jury hearing that takes place, if it involves sexual abuse, then you're going to have to release it. And all of a sudden, you had your wish. Talk about some of the things that you were talking about back then that were probably going to be in these articles. In these yeah, documents. you know, a lot of victim blaming, right? These young girls, 13, 14 years old. We knew at the time, before we got these documents, this is going to be turned around on these young girls who didn't know what the hell was going on. They're offered hundreds of dollars just to show up at his place. Don't question what he tells you to do. And then, of course, they turned that on these young girls, the grand jury themselves and the prosecutors What was some of the stuff did. they asked him? I, I, was I mean, oh my God. They, they said, uh, you're aware that what you're doing to your own reputation, to the 14-year-old girl that was repeatedly raped, what you're doing to your reputation. Um, uh, you are aware that you, you, 14-year-old girl, you committed a crime. Yeah. You're a prostitute, yeah. they told her. Yeah. I, it, 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 it makes your blood boil Ma to go through when these. When you read the questions that the prosecutor, Lana, what is it, uh, Bella Lovek, yeah. read these documents. Take a look at what the prosecutor that had control of the grand jury, a grand jury will do whatever you want them to do. Yeah. Very rare does a grand jury not do what that prosecutor is asking them to do. This Lana Bella Lovek, thought it was so important that she asked these ridiculous questions, making these, ch these kids feel like little minor prostitutes, like they're going to be prosecuted. Like, by God, they had control of everything. They knew what they were doing. These were kids who were 14 and 15 years old. This pig knew that they were in high school. I mean, it was very clear, junior high and high school. But he did this anyway. But Bella Lovick, oh, no, my God, she says... Well, kid, you know, child, don't you understand what you were doing? Making them, making them feel guilty. Telling them this is what you're going to face if you come to trial. We better talk about Wh it now. Which is why, as these documents tell us, a lot of the accusers decided, I'm not going to testify. Yeah. She scared the hell out of them. I'm not going to name the names. I'm not going to tell who these other men were, which to this day, we still don't have a list. But this prosecutor did this intentionally, right? It, it's almost like she's trying to protect Epstein for some reason. Yeah, that's the way it looked. I, I mean, it looked there, like that. I don't you know if that's true or not, but right. when you read this, you'll say, well, what was going on here? Was she trying to protect Epstein? Right. And oh, by the way, Epstein had huge political influence, massive political influence. At the end of the day, here's what they were able to do. They were able to punish him like this. He got 18 months in prison, where, excuse, 18 months in prison, 13 months 
were in special headquarters. Talk about the special headquarters where they put this freak. Yeah, the special headquarters, which by the way, the 13 was the only, he's, he didn't serve the remaining oh, five. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, so he, 13 months, he's basically in a special little apartment that is uh, located adjacent to the prison. Every morning at 6 a.m., he's allowed to leave. They say, you're on work release, six days a week. So Epstein goes off for 12, 13, 14 hours a day. I think he has to report back by seven or eight o'clock at night after leaving at 6 a.m. Brushes his teeth, goes to bed, wakes up the next day, does the same thing. So he's not actually in jail. He's just staying in a crappy hotel for 13 months, essentially. When you read this transcript, you conclude that there was a, I mean, it looks like, I don't know whether it was or not, but anybody looking at it would read and say, it was almost like you were setting out to discourage these kids from going after him. Very disturbing story.